Hey guys, welcome back to episode 6 of the Game Maker Studio tutorial series. So uh, yeah, let's get straight into this. Um, what I want to be covering today is the basis of the draw event and how it can be used in certain ways to manipulate certain things within your game. Now, just as a starting point, um, this is a project I'm working on um, for my work experience that I'm currently doing. Um, it's basically a tile placement system where you have these menu tiles and if you click one you can place it onto a grid and it snaps. Now you can choose however many different like tiles you want to place but um, notice how these have got different letters on them D1, D2, D3, what about it for. Um, each tile has its own difficult, well oh, sorry, difficulty level. Now. Uh, yeah, obviously blue is one, green is two, uh, yellow is three, etc, etc. Um, but, the more the difficulty value is, the, like, more different things happen in your game. So there's going to be a battle system where, depending on what that difficulty variable is, um, it basically influences your game. So, um, what I'm going to be doing today is going to be creating a small debug screen using the draw event um, and yeah that's going to allow me to um, understand uh, how many tiles have been placed and the current difficulty variable. So um, let's get straight into this. Um, I've created an object here, um, it's called OBJ GUI, that stands for Graphic User Interface if you didn't know. Um, and what it's going to do um, I'm going to add event and it's going to be a draw event. So I'm going to begin. Oh, sorry, no, this is going to be a. Let me think. A draw end event. And let's just go to control, execute code. Um, so the draw end event, that's going to happen at the end of the draw event. As simple as that sounds. Um, but this is going to mean that if I create a draw event, that um, all of that stuff is going to be drawn in the beginning and the draw e like end event is going to overlay all of the stuff in the draw event. So um, yeah, in the draw end event what I'm going to do is use text. So to do that I'm going to do draw underscore text like that, that's a function in Game Maker and it needs an X and a Y and a string. Now for the time being, the x coordinate is going to be 16, the y coordinate is going to be 16, and the string is going to be quotation, tiles, list, and uh, curl one, space, don't forget about that, end quotation, and the next thing I'm going to do, if I go to this controller object and the create event, uh, notice how it declares like uh, global variables here. Now I want it to get the total tiles placed so that in itself is a real number but Game Maker can't draw um, a real number as a string of text because it's considered a number variable. So what we have to do we have to convert that number variable into a string before it can be drawn. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to take that variable tiles placed and we're going to get a new function so we're going to add something to that quotation that we just put there and it's going to be a function string like that open bracket and then notice down here it says string value so what that is, that's basically what we just put, the global total tiles placed. Um, so that's going to convert that value from a, yeah, a real number into a string. So obviously we need to end that with another bracket, close it off. Now there's another one we want to do is draw text and we're going to set that to 16 in the x coordinate, 32 in y let's just say, and that's going to be a uh, difficulty like that. And then same thing again, 
simple string open bracket global dot and we want to get that global variable the difficulty level now as you add these tiles uh, let's just say tile 3 and we place it um, it sets the global difficulty rel like level relative to the um, positive value of tile 3 difficulty sorry so it takes the initial value of difficulty level and adds tile 3 difficulty on if I place tile 3 um, and likewise if I remove it it yeah decrements tile 3 difficulty from the difficulty level so um, yeah we want to get that variable there um, or we could have just got it out of the controller event which is here uh, which is where it's declared uh, it don't really matter because it's a global variable um, yeah and then close it off with a bracket like that so if we close that off close that off and yeah I believe it's already been created in the room yeah so object GUI notes it down there over here I want to hover over it so it's been created in the room now if we run this it should draw the text yeah which it's doing so we've got tiles place zero difficulty zero so we place one tile um, yeah with a difficulty one it goes up to one uh, and there's one tile placed but this will go to two and seven I believe yeah so we place two tiles and one plus six is seven so like we can just keep adding these like over and over again and yeah notice how it goes back down again once we've like destroyed them um, now I'm not happy with that because it's slightly off so what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to this GUI event and instead of 16 that's going to be 32 32 like that that'll shift it a tiny bit further by 16 pixels on the X axis which means that it's a bit more even now um, now the other thing I want to do, I just want to move it down slightly so that's going to go to 32 and that's going to go to 48 like that so that should be centered in between those two squares that we saw on the grid like that, yeah that's fine so if we go back to the GUI then um, yeah I'm actually going to cover this in the next tutorial a bit more um, but I want the like text to be overlaid um, on top of a small rectangle which is drawn underneath. Now, um, it's not so much of an issue in this one because what it's doing, it's drawing it at that specific coordinate. But um, in most games, your room is going to move about, and instead of drawing it in a specific like x and y coordinate, we need to draw it in a certain viewing port so that allows the GUI to move around relative with the player's camera in a way but I'll cover that more in the next tutorial um, anyway going back to this uh, that's a draw end event we want to add a draw event now so this is going to be drawn before the draw end event and we want to go to control and execute code now the draw event like the draw end event you can do loads of different draw functions but in this instance we're not going to be drawing text we're going to be drawing a rectangle so um, what we want to do uh, draw underscore rectangle like that it's going to open a bracket like so and notice this has got a lot more like like variables that it's got to return you've got x1, x2, y1, y2, out y um, now x1 is the coordinate of the first like left corner of the like the actual rectangle itself so um, if I bring up a paint document um, like this you've got a rectangle like this uh, 
that is gonna be x1 and then y1 like that that is gonna be x2 and y1 that is gonna be down here x1 and y2 and likewise this one is going to be x2 and y2 like that so yeah that's the way the coordinate system actually works so um, what we're actually doing here we're getting x1 and y1 and x2 and y2 so what that's doing if I go back to that paint document that it's getting the actual vector in between the x1 y1 and x2 y2 which means it gets the total area of a rectangle involved like that so just simplifying that a bit for you there um, so for x1 we need it a tiny bit um, extending from the pixels where the text is so I believe I set that to 32 and 32 so what I'll do I'll set that to 30 so for x1 and y1 will be 30 and it now needs to go across and then down so we need to take I don't know let's just say we have four squares added onto it and they're all 16 pixels so um, 30 plus uh, 64 so that's 16 times 4 equals 94 and then I believe we need to add 4 onto that because that's also compensating for the tiny edge bit afterwards of the snapping grid point so let's just say plus 4 is 98 so that's the x2 coordinate so that's going to be 98 oh and y2 just needs to go down by uh, 18 pixels I believe because you've got 16 pixels oh actually no it's 20 so you've got two pixels either side of the 16 pixel block uh, so that's 50 pixels well yeah coordinate of 50 um, and I've also missed the yeah something out of that, that needs to be false um, all that is that sets the rectangle as an outline but we don't want an outline we want a solid block um, and the other thing we need to do is set the colour of a rectangle so draw underscore set underscore colour and then this is a predefined variable in game maker uh, c underscore white if you want the full reference to those you can just simply hit the middle mouse button and it brings them up for you so there are all the colour references so obviously end them with semicolons to end the statement let's just double check them yeah they're fine so if we run this now we should have an overlay well yeah an underlay of a rectangle oh and I've just realised something <laughs> um, draw set colour and then c underscore black like that so that's going to set the text to black now if you notice that rectangle it was actually a bit off so I'm going to need to adjust the coordinates of it so now we've got black text and a white rectangle being drawn underneath um, so we need to add a bit more to the x and y coordinate in order to make it um, seem a bit more like yeah <laughs> usable <laughs> so um, that's the end event we want this event here so that's clearly not enough so what we want to do um, set this to add 16 so 66 that should do it hopefully and there we go that is one pretty bug standard way of having a draw event so yeah like you know, it's, it's updating the text um, and what we could also do is make it so that that draw event is only drawing under certain conditions so we could make that a debug sort of screen in a way if we want to um, and that's going to make it only show that text if we want it to um, and that's going to make it really easy to debug in the future when you're making your game so 
but yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this video, guys. Um, if you found this informative or yeah helpful in any way, please don't forget to like the video. Um, subscribe to the channel if you're not already, of course. And I will catch you in the next video. So peace out, guys. Have a good one. Thank you.